Martin Luther King. Yeah. And we we sort of got caught up in that, but I think that we, we can get you out of here. And, Okay. Because I got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get out of here. You yeah, saw, I saw your lot, daughter. Yeah, yeah she, she said she had to step out. That's my out. granddaughter. Your granddaughter, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I uh, she like has, she's a grown man. <laughs> she sure does. Like, she's always there from three yeah. years ago. But it's truly going away. Okay, Doctor, now what are we going to talk about? I think we were, we were talking about the, what, the importance of African American History Month okay, or so anything you want to call it. African American History Week. Month. Okay, month, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll let's, do, let's do that. And that'll allow you to deal with any other, any aspect of it. Okay. okay. Doctor, okay. I hear you. <laughs> Y'all be careful now. <laughs> yeah, you. You don't see those caps too much at the Lorraine Motel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those were. Uh, Three professors from over at Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the history department, you yeah. say? Well, in the divinity department, Dr. Oh. Baldwin and uh, Dr. Anderson and Dr. Howard. Oh, okay, that's they're good. They over at, uh, I think they're all in the, the. Well, Dr. Baldwin retired from yes. Vanderbilt Divinity, but uh, the other two, Anderson and uh, uh, Howard, they still, still there. over there. As a matter of fact, Dr. Uh, uh, Anderson, the one that just, just walked in, in yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he taught over at Tennessee State University no. in the uh, psychology department. Oh, okay. City. Yeah, so I think, uh, see, he's, who did he say he worked with over there? He, I can't remember, but, but he, I think he, 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 he taught yeah, over at Vanderbilt. Are we ready? Yeah, Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is African American History Month, and we're fortunate to have with us Dr. E.K. Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University to uh, talk about African American History Month. And of course, Doctor, uh, let me welcome you to the show this morning and tell you how delighted we are to have you, and especially uh, to talk about African American History Month, okay. because I think that over the last many years that we've had an opportunity to talk to you on this show, yes. we've talked about African American History, African American History Month, and you've made a tremendous contribution in terms of bringing us information, not only dealing with the African American, but with sociological situations itself. And so let's uh, have you to talk about uh, Dr. E.K. Sanford okay. for a few minutes by giving us some information in reference to your background, education, and your experiences. And after that, we'll get into the second segment, and then we'll uh, talk about the uh, African American History Month or the African American History Celebration yeah. or the African American History Year, however oh, okay. you wish to uh, proclaim it. Absolutely. And I thank you so much again. Um, it's always a pleasure being here and always a pleasure sharing information. And as you mentioned, I'm Dr. E. Kelly Sanford. I'm a professor of sociology at Tennessee State University. And I've been there now for over 20 years. And I hope you listening audience know that you and I were there at the same time um, uh, and had some of the same students who leave my class, go to yours, your class, and come to mine. And I really enjoyed those years with you and being here again today. Um, I did my postdoc degree, which I would like to share today, at the Pennsylvania State University up in State College, Pennsylvania, Penn State. And um, there I did a postdoc at the National Institute of Mental Health on gerontology, intergenerational family studies, looking at the African American family. Did my doctorate degree, very proud to say, at Howard University in Washington, D.C., where I had other experiences there, um, working with the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, and very fortunate to work with the National Headquarters of the American Red Cross. 
I was with the groundbreaking research that was done at that time on HIV AIDS education. And as you may very well know for the listening audience that the rollout of HIV AIDS programs came out of Washington DC at the National Headquarters of the American Red Cross. And I was the evaluation unit at that time working with that project. And they had a specific program related to the African American HIV and AIDS, which we'll probably get into a little bit more today. Undergraduate work at North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina, and I'm originally from Oxford, North Carolina, um, and it's not too far, I hate to say, from Durham or Raleigh. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people may not know those little small towns. And if I may, I would like to give a plug out of, of, of also having experience at the University of Michigan at their Institute for Social Research at the University of Michigan while I was working on my doctor degree, and I've had other experiences as, as well. Yes. And so in a real sense, uh, you got a lot of information yeah. in reference to the African American experience, as we once called it. Yeah. But uh, during this particular time of the year, we think in terms of the celebration, the annual celebration, which at one time was a weekly celebration mm -hmm. and then a monthly celebration, mm -hmm. and now it's a, an annual celebration yeah, dealing with the African American experience. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, why we, over the next couple of minutes, why we celebrate African American History Month. Well, as you may very well know, we are made up of a nation of a lot of different ethnic groups that came from a lot of different European countries. And they migrated here. And this is a very topical issue today as we look into the 21st century. But the experience of the African was totally different other than other Europeans that came to these shores. Native Americans, we have to give recognition on, on this discussion that they were already here. This was their land. Africans were enslaved and brought here in a very forceful way. So that's why um, I'm here to talk about today the importance of sharing the African American history. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as you just mentioned, um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson felt that same importance a number of years ago when there was only an African American History Day. Mm -hmm. And then it moved to an African American History Week and a month. And now I think you were right in your, in your assessment that it should be celebrated throughout the year, every year, 24-7. And um, we've done an excellent job. You can look at here in, in Nashville, Tennessee. I'd like to encourage the listeners to go to the African American Museum that is recently open. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's free and open to the public. And so there is this celebration now of, of the African American experience mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so the uh, African American History Museum, yes. located in Nashville, Tennessee, yes. is now open. Is that it what is, you're it telling is us? Now yeah. open. It uh -huh. is now open. Mm -hmm. It's open to the public and it's free. And so not only should, I think everyone here should mm -hmm. go, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just an open celebration celebration for everyone because we contributed to the culture of this American society. Very good and I'm glad to know that it's open and so what we'll do we'll take our first commercial break doctor and then we'll come back. Okay. We'll be back with you following this very very short uh, commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E.K. Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information relative to uh, the African American history experience uh, during this uh, particular month. Let's talk about that, Dr. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think we were picking up from the last segment by saying how it is relevant and very important for us to have such a celebration, not only for African Americans, but for all Americans, and even people that are coming to the shores and that's migrating from other countries even today. Because of that unique experience of enslavement here that went on for over 200 and some 44 years, and how the government at that time with increasing laws of 1776, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution, mm -hmm. left this group of people out who had been here for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So when we think of that document that said life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, it didn't really, it was not inclusive mm -hmm. of people of African descent. And more, when they created laws, they created laws that left people of African descent out. 
So if you just recall and reflect on the Civil War, mm -hmm. that war was pretty much for three reasons, although there were many more, but one mm -hmm. was to maintain an economic machinery mm -hmm. of people of, Af of, of African descent for free, mm -hmm. to maintain that machinery, um, to, to maintain a culture here within the South as it was, mm -hmm. and to keep people of African descent enslaved. So there were a lot of other reasons people could argue, and if we had a big um, debate here going on, people could come up with other reasons. Mm -hmm. But this, those are three of the major reasons why. Mm -hmm. And then after that, people just didn't open their arms up with the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, mm -hmm. which everyone should know the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. Mm -hmm. And then if, you, if it was abolished, you have to be a citizen. The 14th gave citizenship, right? And the 15th Amendment, and we are talking about 1866, they gave the right to vote. To vote. And we're still dealing with voting rights issues today. Voting and suppression. That's right, mm -hmm. voting suppression today. Mm -hmm. And when you think about Dr. King, since we're coming up on the celebration of his, his birthday in recognition of the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he was saying in the 60s, we st 100 years later, we still do not have the right to vote. Mm -hmm. So from that time, we moved into Jim Crow laws that were just something that was created to, to still segregate people of African descent. And Dr. Du Bois talked about the demarcations of segregation that are still very present in our society today. So when we see these demarcations, you know, institutions such as HBCUs or railroad tracks in mm -hmm. cities throughout the South, mm -hmm. that predominantly one person, one group of ethnic group live on one side and the others live on the other. Now with gentrification, people are being pushed out and housing have, have certainly changed, but mm -hmm. still very much present within our society today. So with these laws, it is very important for everyone to understand that history. Mm -hmm. Now, from a sociological and cultural standpoint, one of the sad parts about it is that if we do not understand the history, not only does that ethnic group, meaning African Americans and other ethnic groups, not understand why there is still such a need today for inclusiveness or policies, rules and regulations such as affirmative action that are still needed today, mm -hmm. it was needed in the past because while things might appear to be a lot better now, there's still no fairness, it's still not 100% what, not they, 100%, should what mm -hmm. they should be of fairness within our society. Mm -hmm. One that I would like to bring up is that if you look at our, something you would think as far as music is concerned, mm -hmm. that our national symphonies throughout the United States, mm -hmm. and if you went through and Google pictures, you would not see people of African descent in any of the string sections. It's only about 1.8% of someone that's even in the orchestras. So we have these systems out there that have still prevented qualified people. We're not talking about letting someone be in that's not qualified, but not only in symphonies, but in other institutions that make up with the American society today. So if we don't know about the history, we'll be doomed to create some of the same past mistakes that were done in the past in the present. So therefore, there is a strong need to have mm -hmm. African-American history um, throughout not only the month, but mm -hmm. throughout the year for inclusiveness mm -hmm. in school systems so we can have a better society. Mm -hmm. Go on, Dr. And so I was just going to say, you know, when we're thinking we're making footsteps um, okay. in, in, in the fourth, here we are in the 21st century mm -hmm. with a president, um, 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 Trump, that is really brought about a resurgence of past racism that was, was quite bad in the past. And, and you can't say that it had eradicated and it wasn't there anymore, but it has been a resurgence of it. People feeling justified in coming out and treating people in unequal ways and, and very harsh treatment. And, and it's very present within the society in which we live in today. You see an emergence of, of, of those same terrorist groups that were in the past with an increase in membership. Although you don't see people marching around in the white robes, they are all dressed up in a suit and tie today, mm -hmm. but acting in the same very racist ways. And the same deprivation of life, you know, it's one thing to hang somebody, yeah, that's right. kill them or shoot them and et cetera. Yeah. But it's also another thing to starve them in, a, in yeah. a real sense to put them in an economic condition yeah, in absolutely. which their lives are, are threatened. And, and yeah. so I, I agree with you. That's that. right. Well, very well said. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and so those, the, those things are very prevalent within our society mm -hmm. today. 
So as we have this discussion, I think it's a historical fact now, so in, in coincidental that we're having a discussion, but this is the longest time period within our government that mm -hmm. the government has been shut down. Mm -hmm. And you have over 800,000 people that did not get a check this past mm -hmm. Friday. Whenever you look at it, you have to understand that that is hurting a lot of people. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, that it, it, it's almost incomprehensible. It, it uh, really to is. To think in terms of... Uh, I was talking, I was saying to my wife the other night that what if uh, the, our check didn't come that's this right. month or yes. whatever and et cetera. And, and that's, a, that's a traumatic kind of situation to have that many people exposed to it over whatever yes, you see you're it right. might be. And so, I, yeah, yeah, I think, and, 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 but now what we are experiencing then, now, we've always experienced yeah, it in our past. And that's why I think you would say that it's important for us to recall the kind of situations that we came out of in order to be able to understand where we are now. Yeah, absolutely, and you're so right. And one, and one other interesting point um, to, 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 to um, connect with that is that given this situation, a lot of people that might be the federal level of a two, four, six, eight, ten, and move on up into the 11, 12, mm -hmm. 13, with six figures, without getting it checked, they may be able to last a little longer, but it really brings to relevance how we are still working class people, mm -hmm. and that all of us are in this so-called